Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me on Arts, Crafts, and Everything in Between. I am your host, Eileen, a.k.a. Eileen the Little Crafter. So today is going to be about the art or crafting portion, and the show is entitled Scrapbooking. I have been working on scrapbooking for a couple of years now, and I have to say that it's not as difficult as um, some people make it out to be. It's an art form, and it could be as simple or complex as you make it, so just remember that. The other thing is that you kind of have to look at it as a triangle, and I've heard this from a lot of different designers um, over the years on YouTube and even my art teacher which funny as enough as I was growing up I had an art teacher that that was talking to us about the Renaissance um, period and she was telling us about the Renaissance how everything was done in a triangle to bring your eye to the focal point or the main image so you kind of have to look at your scrapbook layout as a triangle. If you're going to put the triangle to the left or to the right. Um, and make sure that all the little nooks and crannies that you put into it go around so that your, your eye will draw into the main focal point. Whether it be the picture or the title of the page. So... That being said, let's get down to the base. Now, there are a lot of different sizes of scrapbooking, uh, scrapbook, excuse me. There are the 12 by 12s, the 8 by 8, medium sizes is 6 by 6. Um, I don't know if 4 by 4s would be considered minis or medium, but they do to have that. They even have smaller, um, so yeah, it all depends on your preference. Now, in terms of paper, there is a lot of different types of paper out there on the market, and there are a lot of different themes. My suggestion to you, do not go willy-nilly on everything. Um, if you are starting out and you kind of want to dip your toe a little bit, I would get a paper pad that you like. Um, a paper pad, basically a stack of paper that a company makes, and it comes glued together. You just kind of rip it off or, yeah, so... Rip it off gently because I ripped a couple of pieces of paper. Um, so you, and you work on the base there. Okay. Now you take your photos and you basically use them as like a theme. Like let's say the first page that I made for this um, 12 by 12. First page was a father and son theme. And I took the pictures that I loved about my husband and my son. And I used them to create this page. Now... Since it was during the day, I used um, some clouds, which had really nice smiles on them. And by the way, I made that with my Cricut, in case you ever see that layout. And um, so yeah, and I kind of made it grungy. And I used gears to kind of make it more manly. Um, for a feminine or a woman type or girly type you may want to use butterflies you can use flowers you may not want to use the more 3D-ish ones you may want to use the flat or 2D type um, flowers so depending on what kind of um, layout that you're working on or you can even use a canvas or put them in a picture frame so a layout does not have to be in a protective covering in a scrapbook so it could also go on onto the walls so that's another good um, tip to have. The other thing um, is what I do for me personally. I try to use um, my paper pads or, like, let's say, brads or anything like that. Embellishments, as they call them, like ribbon, lace, all of that is called embellishments. So that's a term you may uh, hear a lot. Scrapbookers or crafters use a lot. Um, I try to use them all year round, meaning I try to use them for different projects. Like I'll use um, brides for Halloween for a, uh, well, what what did I use them for? A uh, Valentine's Day card, um, a thank you card, you know, things like that. That's what I look for in a product to try and m maximize 
your usage of the product. So don't be afraid to say, oh, no, that's for this. No, do not do that. Do not make that mistake because then you're going to be suckered into buying more and more stuff. And yes, we do buy a lot of stuff, but if you have it, use it. <laughs> so that is just one huge tidbit that I'm trying to learn as I go along in this process of scrapbooking and card making and all this other stuff. Um, and don't be afraid to use things that you may not think are scrapbook worthy. Um, I've used vintage paper, mixed media paper makes um, great um, embellishments too. You know, you can cut apart because if you don't have the the color paper, you can use inks, you can use um, paints to make your own. So don't be afraid to do, you know, that type of, um, be creative in that sense. Um, I also have found that for scrapbookers, if they're a little overwhelmed, there are, are and if you hear the fridge in the background, excuse that, <laughs> I am in my studio, that's the, the older fridge. Anyways, let's not get back. Um, a lot of companies during Christmas time or any special occasion, I think also on Valentine's during this time, they have um, kits in a box. Like my sister just gave me a, I believe this is a mine, my, excuse me, my mind's eye kit Christmas. And so I will be using that and you can either add on to it or you can just leave it as is and it will be just perfect and it will be very easy. Um, so a lot of companies will do that. Um, so that's also easy if you want to kind of dip your toe into scrapbooking. So it will not be overwhelming. So what else could I say? Hmm. Um, try and get the best glue you possibly can. Get a glue that you know is going to work for you. Um, it could be a wet I recommend you guys getting a wet and a dry adhesive, um, meaning a wet adhesive, meaning glues like quick dry adhesive. Um, they have Tombow Mambo uh, adhesive, which are two of my favorite. Um, in a pinch, I'll even use Elmer's glue, which sometimes I run out <laughs> um, in a pinch, definitely. And that's what I've used on my first scrapbooking layers, and they've held together pretty well. Um... As far as double, I I also use, like for ribbon, I'll use double-sided tape. I've got some from the 99 cent store. Um, 3M makes another good one. Uh, there's something called score tape or red line tape. And it comes in different sizes, so really skinny to really fat. Um, pop dots are also, or foam tape are really good. They help um, lift or make your uh, embellishment to more 3D-ish. So that's also uh, something really good to have. What else? Hmm. I'm trying to think of glue. I should have wrote this down. A Zig 2A pen is also another good. Anything by Zig. It's like a pen which basically you can use for die cuts. And there are a lot of die cutting machines. I personally have the Cricut. I just got the Cricut Explorer and I'm having some issues with that. So I will not be talking about that right now. But I did love the Cricut um, Expression, the first one. And the Cricut um, Imagine. I love those machines a lot. I use them quite a bit. And... I find that they make die cutting really simple and easy and really fun. Um, but Cricut is now making the Explorer and I'm definitely learning how to use that. Um, I also have a Vagabond which is another great machine. Like I said, this is just preference. Um, and there are a lot of great dies out there and the companies are making a ton of word dies. So some come with a bunch of them, some stamps are always another good option. Um, if you're afraid of storage, um, if you want something less compact. My tip for you about paper, I will always, always say this. Do not 
<laughs> do not run out of basic cardstock like your blues, your greens, your blacks. Um, get extra white and black because I find that those are the colors that you may reach for in a project. And those are the colors that help things um, pop, especially if you're a stamper. I find that if you're going to stamp something, you really want to see it. So, therefore, white would be a good choice. Um, again, that's just my preference. That's, a, that's something that I use. But um, other stampers use other types of paper. So, that's kind of good. Um, so, I'm learning. I'm learning a little bit more and more. Um, I would say if you are going to start into embossing, which is basically um, just a powder that mel melts, excuse me, melts when you heat it with a um, heat tool, basically like a, looks like a, I wouldn't say a, looks like a long hair dryer, and it kind of sounds like a long hair dryer when you turn it on, but it burns much hotter. Um, Martha Stewart Recollections. Ranger makes um, some of the best. I think Mo Milwaukee or Milwaukee. I've never heard of them, but I've heard of a couple of scrapbookers from the industry use that as well. They say that that's the best. Um, I would get that. <clears throat> Those are some things that if you want to do embossing, they it kind of looks like... And it kind of looks... Depending on the powder that you use, because... Ranger makes a good powder, um, wow, um, Stampendous, there's a lot of different companies that make different types of, um, embossing powder, and you just kind of have to go through it, pick and choose, um, Recollections, Michaels, um, has that brand as well, um, okay, so what else could I talk about, um, titles, um, titles for a page are important. Um, sometimes they could over, overwhelm you, um, just keep it simple and have fun with it, because I know that it's like, oh, what do I say, how do I put this, you know, how do I phrase this, um, I'm not big on journaling, and I know that a lot of people are, so I will try and pick a title that will help describe my page and the meaning behind it as much as possible. So if you're not big on your handwriting, then, you know, knock yourself out. Even though I do think that people should stop because handwriting is, you know, a personal thing. And it's something that, um, you know, you should be proud of. Um, especially since as kids, I know that we worked really hard <laughs> to, <laughs> to improve our handwriting and make sure it was legible for the teachers or our professors. So, I think that that would also help. Um, anyways, so, titles. Um, you know, it, it, it's a personal preference and it's up to you. Um, so, just have fun. Now, the other thing that I wanted to discuss, and I'm sorry that I keep go bouncing around in titles. I mean, <laughs> titles. I mean to say topics. The other topic is paper. Now, the weight of scrapbook paper is much lighter than cardstock. Cardstock is basically heavier in weight, and I find that it makes good um, photo. Um, and it's plain. I believe it's more plain than anything. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. I have never seen um, printed cardstock, so. But this probably are with my luck. <laughs> Anyways, what I wanted to say was it is heavier and it makes good um, photo mats. It also helps with die cutting, um, you know. So, I mean, even though you can use the scrapbooking paper, it, I just find sometimes that when you're with a delicate die, sometimes you may want to use a uh, cardstock, heavier cardstock. Um, that's just a preference, you know, every once in a while that I have. But... In anywho, guys, um, those are just some of my tips and tricks of scrapbooking. Um, so I hope that you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me comments and rate this and let me know how you think. Um, another quick thing that I wanted to say was there was a really good book. I do not remember the author, so I'll just let you know the book. I read it and I really learned a lot from it. It was... Um, you guys are going to laugh at this, but it's called Scrapbooking for Dummies. 
So I believe I got it at Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> Anywho, so um, I will catch you next week. Hopefully, I will have a guest. We'll we shall see. And um, again, bye for now.